Hello everyone! In this video, I want to provide you with a structural guide on how to approach quickly making assets for your game. This is not a tutorial and I won't be showing any specific techniques, but rather outline points one should take into consideration. My name is Lopai and I'm a 3D artist and Subi game developer, currently working on my first bigger game prototype. Before we start, I have a word of warning for you. No matter how fast and efficient you want to work, health comes first. If your wrists aren't working, you won't be working either, and that possibly for the rest of your life. So take care of your hands, artists. While this guide is primarily focused on 3D models, it partially applies to game asset creation in general. If it is faster and easier to make an NPC a 2D sprite, then go for it by all means. If you insist on the use of 3D, however, then this video is made for you. First, the most important point of this guide, art style. The art style defines the complexity of your models. If you made a highly realistic game, your models need to be highly detailed. On the extreme other end, if you are using 2D 8-bit pixel graphics, you can make that space shooter asteroid in under 10 minutes. In order to make the 3D asset creation faster, you can choose to go for a low poly aesthetic. A great example are PS1 graphics. You may also have heard of the 256 fast challenge, which limits the creator to using a maximum of 256 triangles and a texture space of 256 by 256 pixels. Another option is to mix 2D and 3D together, maybe even in a sketchy style. For example, your character, and maybe foliage, could be a 2D sprite, but your environment more 3D. Another option is to reduce the steps in your workflow. You could strive for simple colors, maybe even just one set color palette, onto which you scale down and drag your UV islands. If you give your models the color through shaders and engine, you can completely skip the unwrapping and texturing process. A great example for this kind of style is the game Return of the Obra Din, which uses dithering shaders with one highlight and one shading color. In fact, I took a similar approach in one game jam I was part of. Last year in summer, two friends and I decided to join a 48-hour game jam hosted by students of the university where I was studying at the time. The three of us made a cute little game called Get in Shape, which you can see right now on screen, and play in the browser if you want to. It even won overall first place. I was the only artist on our team and made absolutely all visual assets you can find in our game. For that, I had to work fast and efficient, which is part of the reason why I'm making this video. I chose to go for a low to mid poly style with a focus on vivid colors through in engine tune shaders. Later, when we decided to polish our game more for a presentation at the university, I was able to create two more environments, each made within four hours. All right, but let's get back on track with point number two, relevancy. Focus on which models are needed immediately and absolutely, and leave additional assets for later. If your game features a main playable character, then that model takes the highest priority. If your game has an outdoor environment, then creating the main landscape matters most. Trees and rocks come later. Similarly, for indoor environments, a blockout of the whole structure is most important, and interior design is second. The next point ties in with the last one, planning. This may sound counterintuitive at first. Why would you want to pick pen and paper before booleans and blender? But hear me out. When you know exactly what needs to be done and the order of it, it allows you to skip all brain lag moments later while working. A solar plan will always let you know what to do next and you can include some testing steps. When you're unsure about the game engine integration of your models, for instance, it may be worth porting an unfinished version of the model into the engine early to check if your idea pans out. When you choose a shader-based simple color art style, you can skip unwrapping and texturing. When you have some references and concept art at your hand, you will have an easier time actually making the models. To learn how to easily set up references in Blender and what settings you should be using, you can check out my video about it after this one. So a good plan should include things like what are your workflows and all required steps to make a model? Can you maybe skip parts of your regular workflow based on the chosen art style? Do you make concept art or a reference board beforehand, or can you jump right into modeling? Which models are more important than others and how long could they take? Following that, point number four, deadlines. Not every project needs them, and in short game jams, the deadline of the jam might already be enough, but I'm talking personal goals. It's important that you can evaluate your own speed and realistically say how long making a model may take you. You can also use a game jam as an opportunity to challenge and measure yourself in terms of speed. 
Based on your speed, you can give yourself a daily, weekly, and monthly progress goal and tell your teammates roughly when they can expect a finished model. Number five, become speed. This point only matters if you truly want to become a speedrunner of 3D modeling. In order to exceed your own limits, to reach new heights, you must fathom the essence of speed modeling. Learn the shortcuts, learn the modifiers, learn to use quick favorites. By learning all the tools required for your workflow, you can speed it up a whole lot. Which also flows well into the last point, additional tools. Mark my words, I'm not a Blender YouTuber who is going to promote add-ons left, right and center. I myself only use free or internal ones, but when it comes to speed, sometimes add-ons cannot be beat. One that I use all the time for topology flow, for example, is Loop Tools, an internal add-on that gives you extra options like relax or flatten. This way, my initial topology can be a little messy, but then I clean it up afterwards. You can see my quick read topology workflow in this video. Next to add-ons, there are also regular resources, which can make your life easier. By integrating free-to-use existing assets like shaders and textures, you save yourself quite some time. But you should consider beforehand if searching for resources takes longer than you yourself making them. All right, that was a lot. Here's a quick recap of all the things I mentioned in this video. First, choose a simple art style. Second, focus on important models first. Third, plan your workflow. Fourth, set deadlines or personal goals. Fifth, learn speed modeling techniques. And lastly, find add-ons and resources. Remember to take breaks in between all the work and stretch your wrists. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already in order to receive inconsistent monthly Blender-related uploads. Thank you for watching and happy blendering!